we're, we're starting to get off track. What I'm hearing here is we're going to need a modification to the testing schedule. Let's go ahead and make an action item to set up those dates. That bit of mesmerizing work angst is from conference call biz. So let's discuss just why conference calls have such a special place in auditory hell. <laughs> Created by Zach Scott, conferencecall.biz beautifully captures the misery that is the modern conference call. 75 random snippets of meeting dialogue from 15 people are played against scenes of office life, all set to a meditative loop of music. It's part art and part social satire. And for some, it's pure melancholy, particularly if you have to participate in conference calls on a daily basis. So why is this type of technology such an affront to your brain? Well, for one, it appears that you're calling into the great void, a vacuum of existential work angst. But it's the last of visual input that causes participants to feel decentered. According to two research studies by Morabian and Weiner, up to 60% of communication is nonverbal. So that joke you try to land on a conference call could elicit a chorus of awkward crickets. Or the bad news you're trying to diplomatically deliver could go off like a time bomb. And even if you're calling into a webinar or a video conference and you have the luxury of human faces to interact with, that's no guarantee that you won't have some sort of distortion, echo, or other technological snafu. And at the very least, you're not going to be able to make actual eye contact. And this is where the auditory portion becomes so exquisitely frustrating. Your brain likes nice, predictable patterns. That's why it hums along when listening to a conversation between two people, but falters when it overhears, say, a cell phone conversation with only one person speaking. Your brain is reeling, trying to figure out what the conversation is about, a conclusion that was handily proved out and detailed in a paper titled, The Effects of Cell Phone Conversations on the Attention and Memory of Bystanders. The parallel here is that a conference call riddled with barking dogs, echoing voices, and distortion can create the same kind of gaps in predictable speech patterns, causing your brain to try to catch up. Conference calls in their many glorious forms are sadly here to stay. So what's a person with a chock-a-block schedule of calls to do? Well, according to self-mastery guide Gary Van Warmerdam, as you wait for co-workers to enter the call, you could recite this mantra. Thank you for so many experiences and so many things. Thank you for this dance. Thank you, life. Or you could just practice good conference call hygiene. Check your numbers and passcodes five minutes before the call, put your phone on mute, stow away any barking dogs or screaming children, and wait it out. Given the limited amount of time we Sorry, have on this project, I, I really feel like we need to reach a decision now. Can whoever's typing please Hello? mute your phone? Hello? Hello? Sorry, I got disconnected. Hey, what is your pet peeve when it comes to conference calls? Let us know in the comments below. And to keep the deliverables coming and this synergy flowing, make sure to subscribe and press pound.